I'm making a game where you're the last wizard alive, and tons of angry boats are trying to destroy you. This is my second devlog of my first time making a 3D game. Ingodo for a game jam. The Jump Ship Jam by Bargy and Polymars to be exact. My first devlog is very long and probably not that great, but if you just want to watch my first confused steps into Godot or want to fall asleep to someone talking about code they don't understand, that's there for you. I just needed to get something out in the middle of what has been a very busy few weeks for me. This is when the game jam started, this is when it ends, and this is where I'm at. That's yeah. oh. As you can see, the first week of this event for me was shot because someone thought they were in creative mode and tried driving through my car. I'm very sad about this because my beloved 2013 Hyundai Veloster Turbo 6 speed is likely totaled. So, I'm not where I wanted to be, but I'm trying to make the most of it. In fact, I'm going live every time I sit down and develop this game now. That way I can share my progress and what I learn in real time with those interested, expose my ideas to others before fully committing, and most importantly, learn from those who are more experienced in Godot than I am. Last time I did this, we had a really good time and I have to give a big shout out to Stimpe and Crying Potato. I maybe probably should start with something simpler, but we're just going to see what happens on the day of submission. Hopefully future me is very happy about this decision. I wanted to just build off the minimalist C vibes of the Jump Ship Jam, which I'm sure no one else is doing. In order to keep things simpler for myself, I'm also heavily inspired by the recent and fantastic Thronefall by Grizzly Games, Jonas, and Paul. So I'm trying my hand at a tower defense game, but there's a catch, and I think this will help set my game apart from others who might be charting a similar course. The core mechanic of my game will be centered around speed typing. But before we open that can of worms, let's recap my progress I've made since my last devlog, which will lead us to the bug that almost capsized this whole idea. So the premise of my game is that the player controls a tower in the middle of a map and angry boats come from all sides to attack you. See, the muggles and the religious town folk of the neighboring continents surrounding your peaceful little island don't like you very much. Why? Because you're a wizard viewer. To them, magic is evil. So they have come to topple your tower and knock down all your fun. Just like your brother did that one time you made that awesome cushion fort in the living room. I never had a brother. So without further ado, let's get into the development process. Day one was full of a lot of confusion. Wait, my boat's gone? I deleted my boat? What? And really just finding my footing and feeling my way through the engine. Just barely dipping my toes into its nodes and... Oh god, I'm never saying that sentence again. And composition structure. After stumbling around with ChatGPT, which did not help me as much as I thought it would. Following a few tutorials and finally committing to Godot's solid documentation. Mwah. But by the end of day one, I had a very basic environment, an enemy boat prefab, both of which I rebuilt because I was using the wrong nodes at first. I spent the rest of the night quickly editing these first steps in Godot for devlog one that I posted on day two. And we're already in week two of the jam, but I continued to follow the documentation to better know my way around the engine and found some super helpful keybinds that I want to share with you that greatly improved my workflow. Is using a control and one, two, three, four to open up that number of viewports. That is so dope. Also just found a control F one, two, three. You're welcome. I also learned some camera tricks and picked a style I like for what the player sees in this orthogonal view. Preview on here. Oh, so sick. Now we can see what the camera sees. Then we can move the camera. We changed it from perspective to orthogonal, which better helps the player apparently read, and I also like the look of it. It's also good to keep in mind that I went into this project with an open mind, so my ideas, game mechanics, and scope are constantly evolving, and having this experimental mentality makes things really exciting for me. Following the documentation, I also made it so that enemies will be deleted if they leave the field of view to save on performance, but I don't need it exactly in this way. I'll probably use it in the future for when the boats sink, and hopefully, I have time to make them do that. I learned how to set up a path for the enemy boats to spawn from. Initially, I had a very different vision of the map, where the player's base would be on the left of the screen, with a castle and a shoreline, and enemies would spawn from the sea on the right side of the screen. You would send your own boats that you would speed type to build, to meet them in the water, to battle, to keep them from reaching your castle. And that's where day two got me. However, 
With the success of getting enemies to spawn, I encountered my very first bug. One that would prevent me from even prototyping my game. The boats were spawning sideways. Over. Although this wasn't ideal, I was just happy to be making progress and figured it would be the very first thing I would tackle on my list the next day. Day 3, once I got off work, my first thought was to simply rotate the enemy scene, the difference that it was spawning sideways. Okay, so I just tried turning the uh, boat the exact amount I needed to rotate it in uh, the scene it's made in. And that did not fix the problem uh, when it's spawning here in the main scene along the spawn path. But this didn't work. It seemed like such a simple solution, but I spent the entire remainder of the day banging my head against the wall, reading my code and documentation over and over again to make sure I'm fully understanding built-in functions. Side note. I don't still fully understand them. I started poking around and testing changes I was guessing at as I slowly zeroed in on the source of the problem. Or so I thought. I'm, z I'm zeroing in. We're figuring this out. I'm, I'm gonna figure this out. The rotation and everything is happening in this function. It's gotta be. Whoa, that's crazy. They're not even spawning on the path. All right, let's just change this. Let's see what happens. Whoa, wait. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god, they're flying. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense. I don't understand. Why would the... Ro what are we doing with this again? See? Okay. I don't understand what just happened. <clears throat> but... I'm kind of having fun. But I had spent all my time for that day, and I had to go to bed. Day four, there was another issue where the enemy boats were also spawning off the ground. So I took this moment to just take a break from the spawning issues and I pulled the ground up. Woo. I am a professional. But after all the effort of day three and now day four, I would once again lie my head down to sleep that night, not knowing the answer to my spawning problem. Day five, I knew I had to do something. Already halfway through week two, and if week one wasn't tough enough, I picked up a bunch of shifts at work to prepare for the possibility of needing to buy a new car once this is all done. I knew I needed to tap into more experienced minds. So I set up OBS to stream this new format for my channel, and then I went to work. And that's all I got done for that day. I had essentially established what the issue wasn't. So I had a good feeling that the next time I sat down to work, it would be possible to finally move forward again. That or I'd have to scrap the entire project and really rethink what I'm doing. Day six. It's almost the end of week two. I'm determined. I get home from work, I sit down, and I fire up a live stream and start chowing down on a late 5 p.m. lunch of Chick-fil-A that I was just simply too busy to eat earlier and then proceed to test my theory about what's wrong with the spawning. Well, here's, okay, so here's what I'm thinking. This might be the fix. Maybe we change this pivot. Oh no, see, here's the problem. If we only change the pivot, the, the collision shape will be off. Let's just see if that's the answer first. All right, but if this fixes it, then my problem is solved. Hey! <laughs> yes! Guys, you were here! Now hang on a second, Void, you might be saying. Didn't we already try manually rotating the enemy scene? And to that I would say, yes. Yes, we did. Apparently, rotating the root node of the scene was not the intuitive solution. And then all that time, brushing up on mathematics and geometry, Googling what a radian is because I forgot. No, all I had to do was not touch the root node's rotation, a character body 3D, but move my mouse a teensy bit lower to the next node in the tree and adjust the pivot node's rotation, a simple node 3D. This, I have to admit in hindsight, should have been my next move while troubleshooting instead of swan diving into the documentation. But intuitively, it made no sense to me at the time, and it still doesn't. Because if I went to rotate the pivot node, I would uh, have to rotate everything else in the scene to fit this new character mesh, which 
I had to do. And since it didn't work for the root node, I didn't see why it would work for any of the other nodes in the tree. Like, it's not, you're not giving me the right signals here, Godot. But with that finally out of the way, not needing to scrap my game and the rest of the night available to work, the wind was in my sails. This time, with a crew beside me. I revised my vision for the game and changed the spawn location to surround the player who would now be in the middle in a tower on a little island. Terror and power, lightning and <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm, I'm nowhere close to that yet. I remade the ground again uh, to be something more appropriate for my use case by using a plain mesh instance 3D instead of a box because I don't really care about colliding with the water. And that is what really made me lost in the very beginning. There are so many ways to do the same thing, and it might not be that any of those ways are necessarily wrong, but if you know what you're doing, there's probably one of those ways that's the best for your goals. I assigned collision layers so the boats don't collide with each other and cause weird stopping issues. And finally, with great help of the chat, the crew beside me in this endeavor, the boats now stop once they're in range of the tower to start attacking it. This took a lot of work figuring out if I should use a state machine, a signal, or a function to compute the distance between the boat and its target, and even how to assign its target. Should I be getting nodes? Should I be using the player name? But if I change the player name later to something else like tower, then that location is no longer there, and then that connection is broken, and I kept running into issues where I was trying to pass types that weren't the right types, and I was getting confused. But while I can see how states can be a very powerful thing, it just felt above me at the moment, and I went with Crying Potato's suggestion of making my own is in range function and using a boolean to determine if the boat should stop moving. To polish this up so the boats didn't form a perfect little circle around the player every time, I created a new variable that stores a random value between two min and max ranges I exported so I could easily adjust them later, and used this new value as a range check. But the session turned out really productive, and I felt really proud of myself just to see things uh, coming together, and I was super grateful for Chad being there. I was also super inspired with fresh ideas for the game as I gained more clarity with how things could work. Now all I have to do is make it all happen in two weeks. If you want to see that whole stream or the next dev vlog, that'll be here. And if you want to join next time, please do so. And if you're also wondering if my hair did change halfway through this video, you would be correct. I had to leave halfway through. It's Sunday. I have arm wrestling today. <laughs> <laughs>